Hey everyone, it's here, Peacekeeper, coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the German Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 3 Kohlberg class of cruiser. The Kohlberg class cruisers were a class of four completed cruisers built in 1908 through 1910. The four ships of the class were the Kohlberg, Augsburg, Mainz, and Kuhn. The Kohlberg class light cruisers were designed to be light scouting ships, but ultimately the ships were not well liked due to not being very maneuverable and due to that uh, single rudder there and being overly stiff she also had really poor sea keeping as well and and she had a a tendency to pitch and roll and so that it was very uncomfortable to be on board these ships all four ships were utilizing different machinery to propel the ships through the water uh, because they were using them as a test bed the Kohlberg sported two sets of Melms and F Fenninger steam turbines turning four three-bladed propellers, while Mainz was powered by two Curtis steam turbines, which turned only two props. Kuhn was built with Zoli steam turbines and powered four three-bladed propellers, and Augsburg had two Parsons steam turbines with four three-bladed propellers. All four ships ultimately used coal to uh, create steam. During their trials, all four ships exceeded their design speeds and achieved a 26-knot top speed. In terms of service history, Kohlberg, Mainz, and Kuhn were assigned to the second scouting group, which was the reconnaissance fleet for the German high seas fleet. Augsburg was utilized as a training ship for torpedo and gunnery crews up until the outbreak of World War I. At the outbreak of World War I, Augsburg was in the Baltic and participated in the operation that saw the first shots of World War I fired against the Russians. Mainz and Kuhn were sunk by a light cruiser and battle cruiser respectively when Admiral Beatty's first battle cruiser squadron, famous for their action at <laughs> Jutland, uh, broke into... Heligoland Bight and attacked their force. Kohlberg was able to lay a minefield off the British coast and participated in the Battle of Dogger Bank in January of 1915, where she is credited with firing the first shots and scoring the first hits of the engagement while firing upon the HMS Aurora. Kohlberg and Augsburg would join up in the Baltic, and there they participated in a number of actions, including the Battle of the Gulf of Riga, in which both ships screened the battleships Koenig and Kron Prince, while they attacked Russian positions in the Gulf. After the war, Kohlberg was given to the French and Osberg to the Japanese. The Japanese would scrap Osberg since they had no use for her, but Kohlberg served with the French Navy until 1924. With all of this history, you would think that these ships would actually be a pretty fun Tier 3. Unfortunately, not so much. Basically, the only real improvements to Kohlberg over Dresden is that they have slightly more hit points, a slightly higher top speed, and a tighter turning radius. Unfortunately, she has the exact same main armament as Dresden and only 0.2 kilometers more range to deal with up to Tier 4 ships. This is a massive disadvantage, especially when you factor in the slow shell velocity, which means high arcs, makes it hard to hit ships at range, and the HE fire chance on Kohlberg is still quite low, even though the rate of fire is quite high. Overall, expect the Dresden at Tier 3, which is basically what this ship ends up being. And if you can't tell, I'm a little frustrated by that, because quite honestly, um, there's no reason to basically repeat the same ship just a tier higher. I mean, I get that that's basically what happens for, like... Oh, I don't know. In the U.S. battleship line, it happens in a couple places. The U.S. cruiser line, it happens in a couple places. Phoenix, Omaha. Um, but, uh, you know, there's really no reason to, to duplicate this. Like, there's no, there's no major advantage from going from Dresden to Kohlberg. So, yeah. Well, anyway, let's dive on into the stats. Uh, as I said, Kohlberg has more hit points than Dresden at 18,300. She does have 80 millimeters of armor, and it is going to be still laid out in just a protected cruiser design. And, of course, 80 millimeters of sloped deck protects the Citadel. And 
The main battery consists of 12 4-inch 45 caliber guns. They are mounted six per side, which means you can utilize six guns at once, which I guess is kind of nice, but that's no different than Dresden. They have an 11.1 kilometer firing range and only a 5% fire chance, a four second reload time. Uh, just overall, not a very, um, it doesn't really grab your attention. Interesting note. The Colbert class cruisers actually received a six inch gun upgrade. Um, it, at the end of World War One, and so I'm, I'm a little confused as to why we are stuck with the 4-inch guns. It would have been probably a more interesting build to go ahead and step up to the 6-inch guns, Wargaming. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on. In terms of top speed, 27 knots, turning a circle radius of 470 meters and a 5.3 second rudder shift time. The detection range by sea is 9.4 kilometers and the detection range by air is 4.9 kilometers. In terms of our upgrades over here, main armaments mod one, that has been the standard since the get go here. Uh, it's really going to be the, the most important one at this tier. Uh, certainly going forward, there is a strong case to be made later on for auxiliary armaments mod one, but at this low tier, there is no aircraft carriers and no secondaries worth worrying about. In the second slot, um, I don't consider damage control system mod one to be a useful skill for cruisers. I do consider propulsion mod one, which is going to reduce the chance of your engine being incapacitated as well as decrease the time it takes to repair the engines, if they do get incapacitated, by 20%. I do consider that to be a superior upgrade at this tier. Well, and, and all tiers, really. Uh, simply because of the fact that uh, losing your engine in a cruiser is a death sentence. Like, seriously, a death sentence. Especially if you end up broadside to somebody. At least if you lose your engine with, or with your rudder jammed, you know, you can... If your rudder gets jammed, you can at least continue moving forward, and hopefully that will allow you to turn if it gets jammed while you are turning. Uh, not so much with the, um, you know, the, the this damage control system is mod one. Uh, steering gear is mod one. You know, there's an interesting case to be made there. I personally think losing the engine is a bigger deal than losing the steering gears. But that's me personally. Either one of these two options is a solid choice. Anyway, enough of me babbling on. It's time to, well, and you're going to hear me babble on for a little bit longer, but enough of me babbling on in port. Let's go look at the ship in battle. All right. So, like I said, Kohlberg is going to see tier four fights. This is a change from Dresden, which can only see your tier two or tier two, tier three fights. So we are on ring in a tier four fight, and uh, this uh, there's a lot of battleships on the other team, and uh, battleships are hard to deal with. The cruisers aren't exactly easy to deal with either, but um, we're going to make the best of it if we can. That's simply what we've got to do, make, make what we can do. So I am going to go to D on this map, and we are going to actually hide by the island there in uh, F6. Uh, and we are going to utilize that island as much as possible for cover. And it, because of the high arcs on these guns, even if you do get spotted, you can still engage a large number of ships from behind islands. So I definitely recommend utilizing islands to your advantage and uh, shoot over them. Kind of similar to the play style of Cleveland, if you're not familiar with how to play Cleveland. Uh, basically, Cleveland is a fantastic island camper. Nice to hide behind islands and utilize that as hard cover, sometimes even firing completely without being detected because nothing can see you. Uh, we're going to try that, and we'll go from there. Uh, overall, I you know, this the ship is basically Dresden at Tier 3, and, and because it sees Tier 3 and Tier 4 fights quite consistently, it is really difficult to get excited about the ship, especially when ships like Tenryu exist and when ships like um, St. Louis exist, because the St. Louis is, is of the same era as Kohlberg, but is a far superior ship in this game because it has far heavier caliber guns, which have a higher fire chance, and really doesn't give up much in the way of rate of fire to get those. And that is really hard to give up. Like, these 4-inch guns are little poodle poppers compared to, 
compared to other cruisers at this tier, and I just... I, I don't know. I, I just don't care for the way it plays. If it had a higher rate of fire, a little bit more usable arcs, or better fire chance, I might be a little bit more enthused with it. And because it's 4-inch, AP doesn't really penetrate much of anything. It doesn't really penetrate with enough oomph to actually do damage. And that gets real old real fast. And so the, the good news here, though, is that this grind is short. And uh, as, even though the ship doesn't do a whole lot of damage, uh, you can still play for objectives and you can still have a reasonably good, excuse me, a reasonably good game in the ship. And so it's not a complete loss. It's not like you're grinding through like the worst of the tier threes and and just well, even if it was the worst of the tier threes, it's not like this ship is is completely unplayable. I mean, the ship definitely is playable. It has its enjoyable moments. It does have a lot of guns. So we do have a Tenryu here. He's sailing broadside. He's far enough away that I I feel obligated to use HE because the AP just doesn't have any pen. And you can see even the HE doesn't have a whole lot in the way of pen. But the good news is, is you can basically hold down the left mouse button and watch the rain of fire go out. Um, switch to AP here just to kind of see what it would be like if we got some hits. And we're going to see here that not a whole lot of damage compared to the HE that we were firing. And somewhere in, well, it bounced. There was a pen in there. Not a whole lot of damage. So it, it's really, in my opinion, a waste of time. You can see shooting at ships at longer ranges, even if the ship had more range, would be absolutely useless because there is no usable way to utilize that range. It simply has too poor of a gun arc to actually do that. We do have a South Carolina over here, though, and uh, as a result, I am going to shoot my guns at him at, at max range. He is going to cross into my lane of fire, so these shots will eventually hit as I am shooting. And because he is a slow U.S. battleship with lots of superstructure, he will take lots of HE pen when those do finally land. Look, there's a Wyoming. So this Tenryu is over here. He's still chugging away. We're, we're about to cap this point uh, by ourselves, pretty much. No, not pretty much. By ourselves, exactly. And so, um, well, we're going to enjoy that solo cap. And there it is. And we're going to continue to engage this Tenryu and see if we can't get some hits because there's really not much else in range to engage. Interesting to note, the battle up on the northern side of this map is getting kind of interesting. And I, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of the hankering here to... Ooh, got a fire on that tin room. I'm getting kind of a hankering here to go play with this uh, Dertsky that's in the mid. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll engage this other tin room while we're at it. Yeah, they're starting to cap the point already. Well, we got the, the solo cap point. We got the points for it, so that always helps. We're going to dive into this middle and see if we can't uh, catch some ships off guard at closer ranges where the disadvantages of having very slow shell velocity are not realized in their fullest. Oh, somebody popped smoke directly ahead of us, which means we need to be on our lookout for ships with torpedoes like the Dirtski. Dirtski's torpedoes are really quite short range, so we do need to be paying attention to our range to him. And we've got about a kilometer before uh, he has torpedoes that he can launch at me. And, oh, hey, you got a defended rim in there. And we'll just continue to engage him. I mean, this is one type that, you know, the Dirtski is, and, and other destroyers are actually very easy to, to do pretty decent amounts of damage to with the 4-inch guns because they don't have a whole lot of armor to... Um, they don't have a whole lot of armor to stop the HE from actually penetrating. I do know that that Dertski, though, is going to fire his torpedoes. And if you look at the minimap, you can see that there's a high probability that he backed himself or ran aground straight ahead, which is exactly what he did. And so as a result, he comes out broadside. Now, if you're going to charge a, a ship like Dertski, which has torpedoes... You're going to need to know that how tight your turning radius is and whether or not your WASD is going to be enough. Oop, battleship fire incoming. There goes one set of torps. There's two more sets of torps. And there's the last set. So we managed to evade all of this Dirtski's fire, which is awesome. 
<laughs> Poor him, though. He's getting kind of the short end of this deal. Ooh, we took a hit. And down goes the dirt ski. So since we're here up here today, we might as well cap it and see if we can't get some more points because uh, teams are actually looking fairly even, all things considered. We do have the uh, Kaiser over there that is just begging to be lit on fire and, and killed. So we will shoot at him using our uh, awesome abilities to shoot over islands. And you get, ooh, we got defended ribbons. That's always good. Nope. Oh, yep. The island is finally in the way. Take that island. I hear you like HE, so I put HE on your HE. Um, anyway, continuing to engage as, as we can with the uh, the longer ranges. You can see as we get out a little bit further away from the island, we are able to get ourselves some shells over. Again, switching to AP just to see what it's like. I, you know, I really don't think we're going to be doing a whole lot in the way of damage here at this range. You can see here we had three shells. They all broke on impact. One penetrating hit for 360 damage. Really not breaking the bank there. Two penetrating hits for 760, eh, you know, not a whole lot of damage being done there. So we are staying in this cap, and we are going to cap it, hopefully. Boom! Nice. So down goes another ship. We are at two kills and 15,739 damage. We are about to get a second solo cap. Because we are awesome and we are solo capping machines. And there goes our second cap. And yes, that was a solo cap. So now it's time to go to sea. There is a Dene over there. And Dene is an interesting ship to play up against. Um, being Royal Navy, it has that special armor piercing that penetrates at shallow impact angles. And you can see here our dirt ski just takes some damage. Like there's not anything I can do about it. Like I literally cannot help him because of how bad my oh down he goes because of how bad the arc is and because I don't have enough range. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Well, we're gonna try and get closer. He's still not. Well, it says I can hit him, but I know I can't yet because he is actually sailing away from me, and you can see that on the mini map. He's sailing away at just enough of an angle that I, I would not be able to hit him with the amount of uh, going away from me that he is. So we're going to try and get into the smoke, or at least get close to the smoke, utilize it for whatever cover we can. And the Dene pops up, so we've got AP loaded. We're going to try shooting and hitting him with AP. I, you know, at these ranges, it's very difficult to get any consistent uh, hits or do any consistent damage, so no damage. We are now also being shot at by a South Carolina. We got this big old island in front of us. I'm not currently detected. Hopefully that detection circle there goes down. There it goes. Gives us a little bit extra breathing room, but not a whole lot. Now, I thought what the Dene was going to do was turn north and come right back at us to try and stop us from capping, but what he ended up doing is running away. Just really annoying. That's okay. We'll just continue to charge and, and hopefully get this cap. Again, it looks like we're going to... Oh! Of course I would take one shell out of that whole salvo. And I'm still WASDing and I'm still getting hit. Oh, there's another one. I'm immobilized. Well, fine. Mr. South Carolina. And one more hit from him. Really annoying that, uh, how, you know, how he gets those accurate hits like that. Really quite annoying. I ignoring the Dene, I mean, uh, yeah, we're going to shoot at him a couple more times. There's a assist cap. But ultimately, God, he hit me again. Ultimately, we're going to end up engaging the South Carolina. But the best way that we're going to do this is from behind this island where we are no longer detected. But our teammates are detecting them, which actually comes here pretty soon. And this is using the islands to your advantage. And you can see the South Carolina has already started to ignore me, which is probably to his detriment. We finally go invisible. And we are just close enough to where we are going to get a pretty consistent stream of hits on him. He's got one fire. And he is not repaired yet. And there is a second fire, which he is not repaired yet. So we'll just keep engaging. Maybe we'll get the third or fourth fire. 
You do have four fire points on all the ships in the game. One at the very bow, two in the middle, and one at the stern. However, uh, it's very difficult to get some of them on certain ships. Like, for instance, the South Carolina's front, the stern and bow fires are very difficult to get because of how small the area is that you're trying to hit to get the fire to start. So if you want to start a fire in the ends, you have to land shells on the end of the ship. You can see there we landed two. We got 396 damage, but not much is going on there in the way of doing any uh, fire starting. That's all right. So that Danae came around the corner and we're detected again, which means we need to start moving. And you can see here my ADD goes off because broadside cruiser and really what I meant to do is just continue engaging the South Carolina. He's got... Oh, he managed to repair. Well, that's that just makes me salty. And then he ends up dying to our Kaiser. Now we've got a, a Wyoming up here that is just in our range. And as soon as this Dene turns out, we are going to... Oh, we are just barely detected by this Wyoming. Now we're no longer detected. And so we can engage this Wyoming with impunity. And being able to engage a battleship with HE, even, even as terrible HE as, as the low-tier German cruisers have, um, it's this really isn't... Um, this is actually a really ideal situation. And rumor mill has it that the... Oh, there's a fire. That the German cruisers are supposed to be getting a buff, which is good news. And we're going to continue to use this island to uh, stay out of the line of fire of this Wyoming. And we are once again going to cap yet another point. Oh, Miyogi gets the kill on the Wyoming. Well, I'm glad he's dead. That means it's time to go hunt down this Dene while we cap. Up to 36,765 damage. We've got two solo caps and assist, two sinks, 118 shell hits. Four fires, ten defended ribbons, and two incapacitations. And unfortunately, the only thing that's going to change between now and the end is we are going to add another solo cap ribbon. We're not going to add any additional damage or shell hits or anything like that, because the game will be over by the time that we get there to find this Danae, who is running. Just, he's gone. <laughs> Chances of us catching him at this point, very small. Very slim. That's all right. You know, he's 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 trying to stay alive. He's probably still learning the ship, and I don't blame him. You should check out my how to play video on it. And there is the final cap. So we've got three solo caps and an assist, ten defends, two sinks, four fires, two in caps, and 118 shell hits. And there is the end of the game. All right. So now we're at the final screen. I've already read the. Uh, the damage counter, but look at 6,873 XP at tier 3. 1,527 base XP. Detailed report shows that we actually did quite a bit of damage in fire. 14,000 damage was done, almost 14,500 damage was done in fires. And of course, there's the credits and XP screen. So as I said in the first part of this video, this ship is very much a Dresden at tier 3. And as a result, it kind of suffers. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.